are the best weapons in each category for Warzone 3 after the recent update followed by the best weapon combinations and perks for your loadouts. Starting off with SMGs, in the last place we have the Rival 9. It's a decent SMG, great movement, great mobility, but it lacks when it comes to the time to kill in the close range aspect. But what makes this SMG really good is it has a really decent time to kill at the longer ranges. It kind of reminds me of the Bass P in Warzone 2. After that, we got the Fennec 45. Yes, it got nerfed, but this SMG still packs a punch. It has an insanely high fire rate, but it also eats through those bullets really quick. So if you want to use it, use it in solos or do as max. After that, we have a very interesting thing over here. We have the Striker, a really good sized mag. The mobility is still great, minimal recoil, and it's definitely something that you should try at least once. But what's interesting about this, that this SMG is tied with an LMG. Well, specifically the Polymod LMG that has the conversion kit that turns it into an SMG. And when I tell you this is the most fun I've had, I'm not kidding. You have to try this loadout. And what makes this LMG really broken is with this conversion kit, look at the time to kill. It maintains an insane damage at range and it has minimal recoil. That makes it the best sniper support in the game without any doubt. After that, we have the WSP Swarm. Probably the best mobility SMG out there right now with an insane time to kill at close range and you're gonna see it in all the tournaments out there. After that, for the close range meta, we got the ISO 9mm from Warzone 2. It has a 50 round mag, its movement is insane and the time to kill on it is just beautiful. Now, if you guys want something that's even more broken than the ISO 9mm, something that will destroy people in close range, then you have to try out this WSP Swarm with the Akimbo conversion kit. When I tell you the time to kill is even better than the ISO 9mm, it's just insane and on top of that using these attachments you're gonna have 100 hip fire accuracy even at the longer distances you're not you're not gonna lack unless you're jumping that's the only downfall about this so if you don't want to use this akimbo build i advise you guys to go with the iso 9 millimeter or the wsp swarm before we dive into the rest i just have a small message for you guys we are 100 subscribers away from hitting 4k on the channel it would mean the world to me if we can get oh to that goal before the new year. And as always, if you guys are enjoying this type of video, don't forget to like and comment what you want to see next. And now for the ARs. Starting off with the STB 556 from Modern Warfare and Warzone 2. If you want a gun that is beginner friendly, doesn't have a lot of recoil and still does a decent amount of damage at range, this is your go-to for sure. It was great to use in Warzone 2 and is still great in Warzone 3. After that, we have the FR Advancer also from Modern Warfare and Warzone 2. I personally love this AR. I dropped lots and lots of 30 bombs just using this weapon by itself. The only problem with this gun is that it's very, very shaky. And that means that you have to use a muzzle that will negate that recoil and you're not gonna be playing with a silenced AR. So while watching this video, if you notice that some of these attachments have muzzles that do not have any form of suppression, it's because I want you guys to have the best, best possible recoil control. Because what's the point of shooting people at wrong range and you're missing everything because of the horizontal or vertical recoil. But if you want to switch and use the VT7 suppressor instead to maintain that silent aspect, then by all means do so. And now in second place, we got the SVA545. When I use this AR, I, I literally couldn't understand what I'm using. This is probably one of my favorite weapons in Warzone 3. It handles the close range, it handles the long range, it has a really great time to kill and barely any recoil. You guys need to try this weapon out ASAP. And in first place, we got the Ram 7. Sadly, it's not like the Ram 7 from Warzone 1. And if you know me, you know how much I love that weapon. But regardless, this is still the top AR in the game right now. The only problem with it is there's a lot of bounciness, shakiness and a lot of recoil which means that I have to use a muzzle that does not add any suppression. Now for the battle rifles, we got the Bass P and the MPZ 762. Now personally, I can't say that one is better than the other because each one is different in its own way. The MTZ 762 lacks having more ammunition like the Bass P, but it's capped at 30 rounds max, but its damage is just insane. The recoil is more manageable because it's more vertical than horizontal, but the Bass P, even though it got nerfed, it's still technically better and you can still add a suppressor, but at the long ranges, it's not as accurate as the MTZ 762. And if you look at the time to kill chart, each one excels in a certain range. So it's up to you guys. These are the attachments and just you try it out and let me know in the comments which bat rifle you think is better and why. And now for the LMGs, and I really want your opinion about this guys because there's something that I don't know what to think about just yet. And I'll explain in a bit. In the last place, we got the Holger 26. It has minimal recoil. By default, it has a decent size mag and it's a great option for anybody that still doesn't know how to control the recoil a lot. After that, we got the DJ58 LSW, and this is where I struggle a bit. 
So the DJ58 has probably one of the best recoil patterns out of all the LMGs in this list, and it's my go-to when I want to use an LMG. But the time to kill on it is not the best compared to the next two. After that, we got the Bruin MK9. It has a bigger mag, a better time to kill, and even less recoil with these attachments, and it reminds me of the Warzone 1 meta when the Bruin was it. After that, we got the TAC Eradicator. Technically, this has the best time to kill, the recoil isn't that bad as well, but there's one problem with this weapon, and this is what I want your guys' help with. So the TAC Eradicator is being used by a lot of people, but the problem with this LMG is, as you shoot, the, the fire rate of this weapon becomes slower and slower. Which technically means that if you're not doing a 1v1 and you're hitting all your shots off the rip, you have to wait an entire second for that fire rate to reset. So what do you guys think? Is the TAC actually the best LMG right now? Or the Bruin or the DJ58 should take that first spot? Now for the Marksman Rifles. If you like single fire weapons, then these are the best two out there right now. In first place, we got the MTZ Interceptor. Yes, it got nerfed, but it's still at three to four shots, depending on where you're landing your shots. It barely has any recoil whatsoever, and it's a really good option for somebody that's really accurate or knows how to use rotational aim assist. But the problem with the MTZ Interceptor is that it has a low and slow fire rate. With that being said, your other option would be the DM56, which also got nerfed, but it still does almost the same amount of damage where you need five to six bullets to kill somebody at range. And with its fast fire rate, I'm using it a lot and I'm enjoying every single second of it. Now for the snipers, there's only two that you should be using. In first place, we got the Cat AMR. With this build, this weapon is just a hit scan machine. You barely have to aim up or lead your shots, and it's a one shot without having to add those explosive ammo rounds which makes the bullets really slow. Now in second place, it's not actually a sniper rifle, it's the marksman rifle, oh the MTZ God, Interceptor. Now why am I saying that? Because the other non-one-shot snipers have a slower fire rate, even less headshot damage than the MTZ Interceptor. As for the MTZ, it shoots way faster, has no recoil, and it's the same if you hit two or three headshots, so there's no point of using a sniper that's not one-shot when the MTZ Interceptor exists. Right now, that doesn't make sense, but this is what we have. Now, what do you guys want for the next video? Do you want the movement guide for Warzone 3? Or do you want the best settings and training drills that I use to have that crispy, crispy aim bodish looking aim? You decide and let me know down in the comments. And now for the loadouts that I personally use, I use the MTZ 7.62 battle rifle and I pair it up with the WSP Swarm or the ISO 9mm. But if I'm sniping, I go with the CAT AMR and I pair it up with the LMG that has the conversion kit, the Polyomod SMG. As for the perks, when I'm not sniping, I go with double time, sleight of hand, tempered, and resolute. But if I'm sniping, I switch to sleight of hand, focus, and stalker, and resolute. Focus is highly important to reduce that flinch. Stalker makes you move faster while you're aiming downside with a sniper. And I like to keep resolute because when I get shot, I like to reposition as fast as possible. A sleight of hand is really important, especially when you have a sniper in hand that needs to reload quick, and that LMG which needs to reload even quicker. And that was it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and sub, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.